my life hasn't been what you probably think it has. We all have our struggles. Have you ever been in love? A long, long time ago. You? So many times. Yeah, all the time. <laughs> Think about finally having everything you always wanted. I can save today, but you can save the world. Steve. Now, I take what I want in return. Everyone will see. Nothing good is born from lies. And greatness is not what you think. That's just a trash can. It's just a trash can. Welcome back, everyone. It's Charlie. This is going to be my Wonder Woman 1984 trailer breakdown and Easter eggs. There's a whole bunch of stuff going on in this. They told us what's going on with the villain Maxwell Lord and Cheetah, so we'll break it all down. If you're new to the channel, be sure to subscribe to get all the Easter egg videos. We'll do a new DC merch giveaway. All you have to do to enter is be a subscriber and leave your favorite moment from the trailer on the video. Make all the Mandalorian Pedro Pascal Baby Yoda jokes that you want about this. We'll just start at the beginning of the trailer and work our way through shot by shot. The trailer picks up in 1984. She's been continuing to save the world, save everyone around her, do as much as she can, but she's super lonely as you can see because most of her friends from World War I have died off. There's a whole bunch of pictures and Easter eggs in the background. Like you look at the little mantle here, there's a picture of Trevor Manor, something that she coined in the name of Steve Trevor. They actually go back to Steve Trevor's watch a couple times. Remember, he gave it to her before he died, so she carried it with her, but they start with it at the beginning of the trailer, then before he appears to her again in full members-only 80s attire with his giant fanny pack, they go back to the watch, but it's only after you get the Maxwell Lord intro. So if you're familiar with the classic version of Maxwell Lord that they introduced in and around the Justice League International period in the comics, they're doing something a little bit different with the character. You find out that she's pretty friendly with Cheetah before she becomes Cheetah. This is the Barbara Minerva version of the character. The reason why they said they went with Kristen Wiig for this role is because they needed someone who could do funny and personable like this. Like she's kind of an awkward, funny person talking to her about being lonely. Have you ever been in love? She says, oh, a long time ago, referencing Steve Trevor. She says she's been in love a bunch of times. So it's just this funny, nice conversation that they're having over drinks. And they needed someone who could do that and then also go to the full crazy town, full-blown cheetah makeup. And they did say that her costume would be a combination of practical and special effects. So when she goes full cheetah, they did have to use a little bit of visual effects to tune her up. You may have also noticed an Easter egg in the way that they did the titles for the movie in the Warner Brothers logo. They're inspired by the classic Christopher Reeve Superman titles with the way that they fly at the screen. Now these are just dialed up to the maximum 80s level with a bunch of neon thrown in. But part of the reason for setting the movie in 1984 is it's meant to be the maximum period of our current ideology, maximum greed, maximum egos, and what kind of villains would come out of that. And that's where you get the Maxwell Lord villain in this movie. The song playing in the trailer is Blue Monday, classic 80s track. Are you going to the mall today? Obviously, malls were huge in the 80s. They said most of Stranger Things season three inside a giant mall. So of course there's gonna be a mall during this. If you were at Comic-Con in Hall H, you probably saw some of this footage way before everyone else. It's not clear why she has to destroy the mall security cameras when she's saving these people, but two people just try to shoot it up so she takes them down. It's also meant to give you a preview for the crazy practical way that they did their action scenes. They said that very little of this is actual special effects. They tried to do as much of it real world as they could. 
You get your first preview for Maxwell Lord. The way Patty Jenkins explains him in the movie is that he's the king of infomercials. So he's trying to sell everyone on their fantasies. So because he's a super powerful telepath in the comics and he has this giant radar array at wherever he broadcasts his signal from, you can imagine that there's probably some of his comic book telepathy involved in what he's trying to sell people on. This specific shot of him with all these infomercials is also meant to be an Easter egg for this classic 80s ad. His speech about everyone getting everything that they want, fulfilling their fantasies, having the better life that they want, is also meant to be a parody of Ronald Reagan's famous Shining City on the Hill speech during the 80s. Because it's 1984, Reagan would be president at this time. If you don't remember the Shining City on a Hill speech, it was a big speech that he gave to the American public to pump them up because we were coming off this really bad recession, the economy was terrible, and he was basically coming out and saying, no, everybody can have their dreams, there's this bright future ahead for us, trying to get them to forget about all the terrible things that have been happening for the past couple of years. So Maxwell Lord is sort of the darkest timeline parody of that. You also notice how they've tuned the color on her way up. I mean, the whole movie is super saturated, but her costume pops way more than I've seen it in any of the other movies that she's been in. Gal Gadot also claims that this movie is bigger than any movie she's done before, which includes the Justice League movie. You get another quick shot of Barbara Minerva thinking about things that she wants. Obviously, it's not totally clear how she becomes Cheetah and how close that's going to be to her comic book origin. But in the comics, she became Cheetah when she was cursed by a village of people. She's an archaeologist in the comics. She's an archaeologist during this. You see Maxwell Lord holding this artifact. I'm assuming that she has something to do with getting him that artifact. Love the way they introduce Steve Trevor at this party, though. He walks up and puts the watch in her hand just like he did before he died back during World War I. It doesn't seem like she questions it that much. She just completely embraces him like, oh, I'm so happy that you're back. The rest of the trailer is a little misleading in the way that they cut it. You're just meant to assume that he's really back. But because of Maxwell Lord's powers and how he's trying to sell everyone on this fake life, I also kind of feel like there's some fakery going on with Steve Trevor in the movie. Like maybe it is fake mind space Steve Trevor and it's just Maxwell Lord's power that he's broadcasting this signal trying to make everyone feel like they're getting the things that they want when really it's not happening. What's not totally clear is Maxwell Lord's powers in the movie. Does he start out with powers or is it this artifact that gives him powers to make everything feel like it's that much more real? This is just another big disaster that's happening near the Capitol building in the street. You see her wearing civilian clothes that look a lot like Linda Carter's clothes during the 70s Wonder Woman series. There's a rumor that she'll have a cameo somewhere in this movie, but I didn't spot her anywhere in the trailer. For some reason, the White House security guards are firing at her and Steve Trevor. It's not clear why, if that has something to do with Maxwell Lord, or he makes the security guards believe that Wonder Woman is trying to kill the president. Great slow-mo shot, they just want to show you her abilities, it's been a while since we've seen her on screen, so they're just trying to show off how fantastic their action scenes are and how much more they've evolved the way that they use her in scenes. They really upgraded the way she uses that lasso, but I think that they've just used the last couple of movies to perfect what they can do with the lasso practically, like how do you make the lasso look cool in action scenes? I will get to the lassoing lightning part in a second because yes, I do think that there is an invisible jet that we just don't see because it's invisible during the trailer. This kind of seems like it's Barbara Minerva after she starts to transform into the cheetah persona, like she gets what it is that she wants or she pays that price. The first movie was Wonder Woman just being completely amazed by modern day London. Now it's Steve Trevor just completely being blown away by everything in present day 1984. You see her intervening in an international incident. This wall being torn down, I think is meant to be a reference to the Berlin Wall being torn down, but that was until 1989. So this isn't the Berlin Wall or anything like that. This is somewhere completely different. I think it's just meant to give you a sense in the movie for what she's doing internationally. She's busy helping people all over the world. I know there are a lot of timeline questions because they said in Batman v Superman, they implied that she hadn't been around for the last 40 or so years. Most of those timeline inconsistency questions can be answered by the idea that they retconned her backstory in Batman v Superman when they got to the first Wonder Woman movie. So when this movie picks up in 1984, she's been busy being Wonder Woman since World War I ended. Here's the weird thing about Mindspace Steve Trevor though. He actually punches one of these guards. So either it's Wonder Woman imagining him doing that or it really is happening. But it's not clear if this has something to do with the artifact that Maxwell Lord has. Like maybe he is getting people to conjure these things up for themselves because of his telepathic powers. But maybe the artifact has something to do with making those things real. Turning fake things into real things. You have to remember that the 80s was a very fake it till you make it kind of decade. 
You get a lot of flashbacks to Themyscira. You see them cut her running down the street in Washington, D.C., trying to save people with her as a little girl running in formation with the other Amazons. But here's why I think that there's an invisible jet in the movie, because she lassos something in the middle of the air that's not there. Like literally the lasso grabs onto something and lifts her off the ground and there's nothing there. So what else could that be but the invisible jet? But because Maxwell Lord has that giant transmitter satellite, I'm assuming that this device is connected to that somehow and he's using it to broadcast his telepathic signal to get everybody to just believe everything that they want to believe. This big action scene on the road seems like it's happening in the same foreign country where this wall is being torn down. Also, just another big action scene meant to show you how crazy they can get with her action scenes. There's a nighttime action scene with her going up against this giant armament. Then you have a much bigger version of her seeming like she's lassoing the lightning bolts. So like I said, if there is invisible jet during this, maybe there is an invisible jet somewhere in this scene that we're just not seeing. The golden armor looks fantastic. If you guys aren't big comic book readers, this is just meant to be a version of her gold armor from the comics. It's just meant to be a much more warlike version of the costume she wears. Obviously the wings are just meant to represent some of the excess of the 80s. So it sort of dovetails with the theme of the movie, the heightened state of everything. So that's why her armor levels are over 9,000. And the reason why she would need to wear something like this covering her arms and her legs is when Cheetah goes full Cheetah because when she gets her powers, Cheetah is strong enough to take Wonder Woman down and her claws are strong enough to just rip right through her flesh. So that's why Wonder Woman would need to protect her open exposed areas. Then because there's a lot of humor in Wonder Woman movies, they end on that funny tag with Steve Trevor not being able to tell the difference between modern trash bins and art. That's also meant to be a joke about art during the 80s. Is it art or is it just a piece of trash? Who knows? But if you spotted any big Easter eggs in the trailer that I didn't mention in the video, just write them below in the comments. Crisis on Infinite Earths episode one starts tonight. My next video will be for episode one. So as long as you have alerts enabled for my channel, you should get all those videos. But click here for that brand new Crisis on Infinite Earths trailer and click here for my Mandalorian episode five video for more Pedro Pascal. Thank you so much for watching. Everybody stay awesome. I'll see you guys tonight.